Good morning. So I'm Mathieu Fauvel from uh, CSBio Lab, and I'm going to present what we did in Anity One about uh, how to analyze uh, satellite images. Okay. So this work was uh, done in the chair of uh, Nicolas uh, de Bijan, learning with little complex data, little or complex data, and in particular we work on three uh, points. The first one was how to combine physical models about our processes and uh, artificial intelligence. Also, we face some noise in the data. I will show it later, but so learning with uh, noisy data, either from the input and from the uh, ground truth also. And uh, in particular at CESBio, we are working with multi-source, multi-scale time series, so how to process uh, them effectively. Uh, people involved in this work uh, was mainly from CESBio, so myself, Jordan Gladas, Vivian Michel, and Sylvia Valero. And within Anity, we have two uh, PhD funded by uh, CNES and the region, and also CS Group. So I'm going to present the work of Leo Alzara and uh, uh, Valentin Bellet. Okay, so what we try to do uh, at CESBio is to extract some information about the uh, Earth observation. So you have uh, one images here. Um, this is a, an, uns an uh, unscaled uh, images, but we can zoom in and we have a spatial resolution on 10 meters. So we have, uh, well, let's say, good details about the ground surfaces. And we try to infer some information about <laughs> the land cover, the land use, uh, some biological uh, information such as biomass, uh, chlorophyll content, etc. And we do uh, static analysis and dynamic analysis. In, in, in particular, we try to uh, find where uh, there are changes on, on the Earth. The problem, uh, first problem, is that we have uh, okay some noisy data because of clouds and shadows and atmospheric effect uh, from different seasons. So we are here. We have most of the images with no data. The white is area is the cloud. And so we need to develop uh, algorithms that are robust to this, uh, uh, let's say, um, irregular sampling of the, of the Earth. So we try to include some physical model from the acquisition process, but also from the uh, observed processes, such as vegetation growth model, etc., and try to combine this with machine learning data science. So today I will uh, present two work made by uh, so Valentin Bellet uh, about uh, how to use some physical prior information for the classification of land cover. And the second, second work, which is similar to what Serge discussed a little bit before, how to use uh, uh, autoencoder and a physical model to define, um, let's say, a Latin space that uh, is uh, that suite, sorry, the physical models. And well, try to learn everything with uh, reduced uh, training set. So uh, let's say I, I try to show some example about the data we have to process. So here this is the X star. So this is one pixel acquisition for one year. So you have the, the date of the year here. And here you have the, the feature, so the channels. Okay, We have more channels than uh, for color images because we have several spectral wavelengths. But well, in gray, you have the missing data. So missing data is because of clouds, because of the orbit of the satellite. And <laughs> depending on the pixel and its location in the, let's say, uh, French uh, territory, we have different uh, acquisition uh, patterns. So we need to find an algorithm that, uh, that is able to deal with irregular temporal sampling, but also with unaligned uh, acquisition. So we have different acquisition time between uh, pixels. So uh, our strategy was to try to define uh, Latin space um, that take into account the structure of the data. So we use a random matrix uh, uh, modelization. And well, in the Latin space, we want uh, to have a fixed and constant uh, representation. So we uh, do three things. The first thing is to, uh, let's say, define a temporal interpolator on the Latin date that will be learned in the training process. And well, this is a very conventional uh, kernel interpolator, interpolator, sorry, but for the uh, kernel here, we use a temporal attention to take into account 
that according to the season, we have different level of noise in the data. We have more noise during the winter than in the summer, and well, using this uh, temporal attention, we are able to model the different level of noise for the interpolation. Then we take into account that uh, the phenology, that is the reflectance of the pixel uh, along the time, can be different according to the spatial position because of uh, sun, uh, sun exposition, temperatures, the vegetation can grow differently in the north or in the south of France. And take into account this uh, phenomenon, we use, uh, this is very uh, conventional, but we use spatial positioning, uh, positional encoding, sorry. And lastly, we uh, add the last layer to take into account the correlation in the spectral domain because we have uh, some uh, redundant information. Okay, so <coughs> in this latent space, finally, what we get, we get something that take into account the spectral structure of the data, so information provided by the structure of the vegetation of the uh, uh, land cover, let's say. We have also a part of this uh, 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 modelization that take uh, into account the spatial position, are the pixel close together or not, and the last term, which is interaction, interaction, sorry, between the spatial position and the reflectance of the pixel. Um, okay, so this is for the construction of the latent space, and then we use the uh, conventional end-to-end -end approach with a, a Gaussian uh, process classification uh, algorithm to learn in an end-to-end -end way all the parameters of the model. So the latent representation with as input irregular and unaligned uh, time series. Here we have the fixed representation and then we have the classification. Um, so we end up with a, a kind of loss function which is uh, very uh, uh, similar to what we have in a variational autoencoder. We have the regularization term and uh, a term that is, uh, uh, well, which is the loss regarding the wrong or good classification of the sample uh, Y plus. So I won't get into much detail, but we can solve these kind of things using similar approximation that are this done in a, in a variational autoencoder. We perform some uh, experiment at uh, large scale. So this is the uh, well, this is the France, this is south of France area. We took uh, pixel from all this uh, uh, area. Uh, we also take one year of data, so it's about 300 dates with images with uh, 13 uh, features. Well, this is, uh, well, I'll go to the result directly. Well, and in terms of results, this is what uh, the our lab produce each year, a land cover map of the French that is freely available using a very, let's say, old fashioned approach where we first interpolate linearly all the temporal acquisition onto a regular grid, and then apply the random forest classifier. So this is uh, the baseline, and this is what we get when we jointly learn the uh, latent space and use a Gaussian process. We get a significant increase of the classification accuracy, that is the number of well-classified pixels. We compare this with also uh, using a standard uh, deep uh, learning, deep uh, networks, for instance, but we get uh, uh, less uh, good uh, accuracy. So if you want more detail about this, uh, uh, we have the publication of uh, Valentin here. So second result uh, about how to use some physical models uh, to infer um, geophysical parameter. So conventionally in remote sensing at least, uh, when we try to recover some physical variables, we have uh, some uh, regression approach. So this is very uh, standard. We have our model, we have the satellite observation, we have some ground truth data, and we try to learn how to regress from the uh, satellite observation, the physical variables. The problem in practice is that this ground truth is very difficult to obtain, in particular at large scale, because we need either to go in the field with some materials and to do some field survey. So this is costly in terms of time, in terms of human skills, in terms of uh, uh, money also. So sometimes we can also use physical models to generate some ground truth and then uh, use 
uh, then try to learn um, the uh, regression function using this uh, simulated data. But there is also a problem because the physical model is usually an approximation of the reality and also the second problem is how to uh, select uh, the distribution of the um, physical model parameter to uh, get some realistic uh, simulation. Uh, so uh, to try to remove these two uh, issues, we uh, propose to uh, use the physical model in the uh, autoencoder uh, uh, scheme. And in particular, we propose to remove uh, deep uh, network from the decoder and to replace the decoder by, by the physical model. Uh, the name is ProSail here. And the uh, tricky part will be to encode the latent space with uh, which respect the uh, uh, physical meaning of the uh, uh, of the of the model parameter. So, in particular, we need to have a specific range of vari variation for data positivity sum to one, for instance. And also, we have some uh, um, order condition for the uh, parameter. So, let's say we have the growing season that come before the senescence, etc. So we need to define a sampling strategy that respect the, the, the latent space uh, config, the let's say uh, physical model parameter configuration. Once we can, once we have solved this, we can learn everything without any reference data. So it's very, uh, uh, it's a very good thing for a particular situation because we only need uh, satellite images and satellite images we have a lot of data available from the uh, European Space Agency or from the CNES for instance so we can learn uh, very efficiently uh, this uh, kind of model. Uh, just some result to show the improvement uh, with respect to what it is done actually in the uh, uh, European Space Agency so the European Space Agency used the regression framework I discussed just before. So this is different uh, location seat. This is two features, so leaf area index, so the proportion of leaf in the pixels, and CCC is the canopy chlorophyll content, so the level of uh, chlorophyll in the top of the, of the canopy. So what uh, ESA, European Space Agency, do is just they fit one model for every uh, site location and optimize everything side by side. So this is very long. And with our approach, using only uh, remote sensing images, no ground truth, when we compare with, uh, of course, uh, ground truth uh, data, we get similar result or a much better result. So finally, this is very uh, convenient. We have no, because we use no training data. And uh, another byproduct, so this is uh, one example of uh, leaf error index. Since we use a, a rational autoencoder framework, we can also generate uh, uh, variants of the estimation that can be propagated into uh, agro agronomic model or ecological model if needed. So in, in conclusion, at least for us, uh, using this kind of generative models and deep learning model for satellite image analysis, it's uh, good things because we are more robust to noisy data noisy uh, of input data, but also noisy uh, data from the ground truth. We can learn model, we can self uh, learn a model without any uh, training data and still have very good results in terms of accuracy. And perspective, which, uh, which are uh, in uh, uh, Amity uh, 2, is to use more data source. In the result here, we use only one data, Sentinel-2, but we have many satellites in orbit and we can combine different sources of information with different modality. Um, we need also to uh, work with more complex physical model. Here, uh, it was uh, easy because the model is derivi derivable. So we don't have any issues in regarding that. But for meteorological model or agronomic model, there are some um, some of them are not derivable, so we need to find some solution for this. And it should be an industrial share, but let's say, let's see. So, so talking about the non-differentiability of your model, uh, so it's, it makes a, a first-order method uh, 
difficult to use in this situation. Do, do you have an idea of, of what you would do? Ah, I found them. Okay. Uh, the first things we are going to try is to do some model approximation. We can learn a neural net to approximate the model and then use this neural net in the uh, forward, uh, backward and forward path. But not necessarily smooth, but close enough to the physical model. Thank you, Mathieu.